Motor torpedo boats, motor gun boats and motor launchers were increasingly at the forefront of naval engagements during the Second World War. However, Britain entered the war with just a handful of coastal forces boats, as the guiding philosophy was that battleships would rule the waves in the same way bombers were going to rule the skies. By 1941, the number, type and capability of boats harassing the enemy around the English coast and North Sea was mostly as a result of private enterprise and with little planning or input from the Admiralty. Yet between 1936 and 1945, the number of coastal forces craft built for the Royal Navy and Commonwealth navies was over 1,850, with more than a fifth of the total built in the Solent region. Hard chined wooden hull craft were developed to the designs of a number of firms, most notably those of the British Power Boat Company on Southampton Water, Vosper at Porchester and Portsmouth, Thornacroft on the River Itchen at Southampton, and Fairmile Marine outside the Solent area in Cobham, Surrey. It was Hubert Scott Payne's passion for speed on water which led to his conviction that the Royal Navy should have flotillas of fast motorboats carrying torpedoes. He was able to put his ideas into practice at his British powerboat company yard at Hythe with chief designer George Salmon. Aircraftman T.E. Lawrence, better known as Lawrence of Arabia, outlined the contribution made by the British Powerboat Company to the development of motorboats of the coastal forces in correspondence with Robert Graves in 1935. He said that for eight years, and now for the last four, I have been so curiously fortunate as to share in a little revolution we have made in boat design. They have power for power three times the speed of their predecessors, Less weight, less cost, more room, more safety, more seaworthiness. As their speed increases, they rise out of the water and run over its face. They cannot roll nor pitch, having no pendulum nor period, but a subtly modelled planing bottom and sharp edges. The great rival in the building of boats for the Admiralty on the south coast was Commander Peter Duquesne at Vosper, based at the yard on the camber at Portsmouth. When another yard to the north was compulsory purchased by the Admiralty, with the capital gained, a new site was also established at Porchester, within the borough of Fareham, between Portsmouth and Southampton. Commander Peter Duquesne was convinced that they could build a faster and more seaworthy vessel. The Admiralty was prepared to indicate that any further contract they placed would be for a boat that could travel over 40 knots compared to the 33 knots of the boats of the day, armed with two 21-inch torpedoes compared to the 80 of the current boats and fitted with machine guns for anti-aircraft use. The Vosper First World War coastal motor boats were planing vessels with a stepped hull, whereas the new design went for the hard chine which slightly reduced the maximum speed of the boat, but significantly improved the sea-keeping qualities and manoeuvrability. Additionally, various alternatives were tried to the stern launching of torpedoes, which was employed by all craft up until that time. Eventually, it was Admiralty engineers that devised a method for fitting torpedoes alongside the bridge, firing forward, which was soon to become the now familiar position for all Allied fast attack craft. In her works trials in 1937, the Vosper design made 47.8 knots unloaded and 43.7 knots loaded, and after Admiralty trials in 1938, she was purchased and became MTB-102. Subsequent trials followed in 1939 against improved British powerboat company designs, but the Vosper vessel was selected for the next series of motor torpedo boats, and much to Scott Payne's annoyance, this vessel became the prototype for a further 350 boats purchased by the Admiralty. During Operation Dynamo, the evacuation from Dunkirk, when Rear Admiral Wake Walker's vessel was disabled, 
he transferred to MTB 102, making her the smallest ever flagship in the Royal Navy, and a Rear Admiral's flag was improvised from a dishcloth. With the success of the motor torpedo boat design, Vosper immediately began to develop the next generation. These laid the foundation for the company's concentration on small, high-speed warships, mainly using the planing hull design. However, Hubert Scott Payne's flamboyant personality did not always impress those at the Admiralty, and he took his design skills to the USA, where he is credited with the development of the PT, patrol torpedo boat, such as that commanded by future President J.F. Kennedy, and rescued General MacArthur from the Philippines. Another shipbuilding firm based on the Solent, also constructing motor yes, torpedo boats, was Thornacroft, who produced marine engines since 1859. As you'll gather from a glance at her formidable torpedo tubes. Speed and range are two vital elements in modern war. They moved from premises in Chiswick to a much larger site on the River Itchen at Wollstone in 1904. Between the wars, a combination of leisure and sport were the primary drivers behind the evolution of the fast motorboat. Shipyard production in the interwar period continued for export and by 1939 the works were producing several craft for different navies, also at subsidiary sites, for example, on the River Thames at Hampton, as seen in the film, and Camper and Nicholson in Gosport. These craft were eventually seized by the British government and brought into service as MTBs. Although widely recognised as obsolete compared to similar craft even at the time, the Royal Navy was desperate for ships of any type. During this period, Thornacroft built roughly a hundred craft, with the only real improvement to their own design and increase in propulsive power. Another builder of coastal forces craft that must be mentioned, although not based on the south coast, was Noel Macklin's Fair Mile Marine. The name was taken from Macklin's country estate, Cobham Fair Mile in Surrey. In 1939, inspired by an article describing the Royal Navy's need for boats, he initially used his garage for the design and serial manufacture of his boats. They were considerably larger, somewhat slower, and for the first time intended to accommodate the crew permanently on board. His concept of assembling boats to his prefabricated design was applied at scores of boatyards around the country, where a total of 703 were constructed. Famously, 15 of his craft were used in the St. Nazaire raid, with only six returning. Alongside this contribution to the construction of motor torpedo boats, a mention should also be made of the female workforce that replaced the menfolk needed for military service. For example, at Marchwood, near the Hythe boatyard, the British Powerboat Company established an academy to train women from all over the country. And at HMS Tormentor on the River Hamble, wrens were employed to maintain the craft. Overall, dozens of shipyards and boat builders around the country were put to the task of producing the boats needed by the coastal forces, and further production was undertaken in the United States. Although early in the war boats were commanded by young Royal Navy officers, the increasing number of Royal Navy volunteer reserves were thrust into command with barely a handful of months as the navigating officer or first lieutenant. Operating in the main wooden craft, heavily laden with high-octane fuel, carrying a large quantity of ammunition and invariably operating at night without radar and few navigational aids, the average age of the crews in coastal forces vessels was 20 years. <laughs>